Hey guys, Outdoor Prepper, welcome back to the channel. What better day to do maintenance on a snowblower than a beautiful 90 degree August day? And I'm kind of being funny, but I'm actually being a little serious because this really is the best time to do this maintenance. You don't want to be out here in a blizzard in 20 degree weather in the freezing cold rain and ice storm. It's best to do this today when it's a nice day and we've still got a couple of months until, uh, hopefully, until the snow comes. So what we've got here today is a relatively, or at least new to me, Toro Powermax 824 uh, snowblower. I picked this up literally for a steal. I paid $400 for this. This retails for about $1,200, depending on where you go to purchase it. I got it from this older couple that was moving to Florida, and they used it for one season, and that was it. So what I want to do today is I want to do a little maintenance on it because since I purchased it, I really haven't done anything with it and it has sat in the garage for a couple of months. So what I want to do is I want to start it up. I want to let the fuel that's left in the fuel tank drain out until it's empty. I want to do an oil change um, and then I want to grease the, the drive shaft, the wheel uh, shaft because, let me pan over here. So if you can see these wheels, they have a little, uh, a little ring on here and you can pull that ring and then pull the pin out and the wheel slides off. And you might say, well, why do you need to take the wheel off? Well, to do an oil change on this snowblower, and actually most snowblowers, the oil drain plug is right here and it has this nice extension tube which clears the actual base of the machine so the oil can just flow out nicely, but the wheel is in the way. So to take the wheel off, you just flip this pin, or you flip this uh, little circle, I don't know what you call it, and you just pull the pin out and you take the wheel off. But if you don't grease the, the shaft over here with some anti-seize, what happens is after a season or two of using this and getting water on that, that drive shaft, the wheel basically rusts to the shaft and it seizes on and then you will never get it off. So I want to avoid that. Machine is still new, hopefully it is not seized on there and hopefully I can get it off. Put some anti-seize do the oil change, uh, and then life is good. So right now, let's get this on the tripod. Uh, let's try to start this up. Like I said, it's been several months, maybe four months, five months since I've started it. Uh, and that was when I purchased it from the couple who, I don't know when they used it last. So I did turn the fuel off last time. So hopefully, hopefully, it's not gonna be too difficult. Uh, but if it is, we've got electric start so we can rely on that. So I'll be right back once we're on right, the tripod. So we're on the tripod now. You're going to see this firsthand with me, and, and I really hope it starts. But like I said, it's been a while. So this is the choke lever. So that's run. That's choke. This is the safety key. Uh, this is the fuel valve. So I had turned that off last time. So that's on now. This is the throttle control. We'll kind of keep it somewhere in the middle. I'm going to prime, I'm going to prime the carb a little bit. Maybe a little more than I need to, but like I said, the valve has been turned off, so there's been no fuel in there. Uh, let's give it a try. Let's see if it starts. All right, that is not... I need a little more fuel. Let's see. Just checking everything here to make sure. I'm gonna take it off the choke. It is pretty hot out today. Let's just see if maybe we don't need the choke. All right, so we did not need the choke. Like I said, it is about 90 degrees outside. Um, glad that fired right up. It blew a little smoke out, but like I said, I probably flooded the carburetor a little bit. So I'm gonna increase the throttle here and hopefully you guys can hear me. I know it is really loud out here, uh, but I'm going to increase the throttle. I'm going to let this run until we're out of fuel and then we'll come back and we're going to take the wheel off and we're going to do an oil change and let's do some maintenance and get this ready for the winter. Okay, back. So it ran for about 25 minutes, finally drained itself of all the fuel until the engine stalled out. So what I'm gonna do right now, and, and again, this is kinda of first time I'm doing this, so hopefully the wheel is not stuck on here. 
but I'm gonna get this uh, camera on a tripod. I'm gonna come over here, pull the pin on the wheel. I'm gonna try to pull the wheel off uh, to make it a little easier to loosen this drain plug. And I wanna point something out on here, if this is new to anybody. So this is the drain bolt right here. But if you see on this tube, which is really hot because it's been running, uh, it's a little flat right here and it's a little flat right here. And that's so you can put a wrench on here. So when you're loosening this, you just take this bolt out and you don't take the whole uh, extension tube out because then you'll have oil come out of here and you'll have an absolute mess. So just be aware of that. I'm sure uh, if you have a, a Toro or even an Aaron's, uh, it's going to be the same thing. You're going to have a little indent on both sides here so you can put the wrench. Uh, and again, this is the pin that we're going to pull out. Uh, I don't want to get dirty, so I'm going to put some gloves on here because there's presumably some grease on this already. So let's get this on the tripod and let's give it a go. All right, hopefully you guys can see this. I put a brick and a little brush just to kind of bridge the gap here under the frame of the snowblower. So the wheel is kind of elevated, not entirely. But what I want to do is I want to open this pin, pull the pin out, and all this is is just really a kind of a circle with the pin on it. And okay, beautiful. So this, this wheel looks like it will easily come off. Perfect. So that's it, the wheel is off. And this is the other side. So what I want to show you is right here is where we want to put some anti-seize. Because if we don't, when it snows and it rains and we get some salt in the driveway, this is all going to corrode and then we're not going to be able to get the wheel off. So let me just go get the anti-seize right now. We're going to put a little bit on there. That way we can continue to get this wheel on and off in the future. All right, so this is what I'm going to be using. This is your typical uh, Permatex anti-seize lubricant. We're not going to put a whole lot on here, but I want to just put enough, like I said, so that it does not seize on here. And you really only get one shot at this because when you forget to do it and it seizes on here, unfortunately, you're not going to get the wheel off. And I've actually heard of cases where the only way to get the wheel off was to actually cut the whole drive shaft and put a new one on. And that's and a new wheel. That's just a nightmare that, quite honestly, I don't want to deal with. So, all right, that is done. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a crescent wrench, and I'm going to put the crescent wrench on here just to hold it. And I'm going to get a, a socket, and I'm just going to loosen this bolt, and we'll drain the oil. So let me go get the tools, and I get a little uh, pan to drain the oil, and then we'll come right back. Okay, guys. So I've gone ahead, and I got a crescent wrench. I got the right. Uh, socket for that bolt and I've got this if you can see it here I got this windshield washer bottle and I just kind of cut the bottom off I usually just use the bottom piece but I actually don't know entirely how much oil this is gonna hold so I figure let's just get a bigger one here uh, just to be on the safe side uh, and the bolt that we're gonna use here this is a or the socket this is a 10 millimeter uh, to drain this right here I got a shop towel just in case we have a disaster which I hope we don't so right now, I'm just putting a crescent wrench on here because, um, like I said, I just want to prevent myself from spinning that uh, shaft. Okay, that was actually pretty easy. So I crack that loose, take the crescent wrench off. And this is pretty hot. I, uh, like I said it ran for almost 25, 30 minutes. So let's see what comes out. Let's see what condition it's in. I hope you guys can see this on the camera. All right, so it's a little, uh, just kind of dribbling out. Let's loosen the uh, oil fill cap, get a little ventilation in there. And it doesn't look so great, this oil. You know, I don't know how many hours uh, it has on it because like I said, this machine uh, is new to me but it is not brand new. I, I purchased it from someone you know, that presumably did use it uh, at least a little bit. So let's let this drain. And when this is done draining, what I'm going to do, or when it's mostly done draining, I'm going to move the, uh, the brick and the little brush that I put here to just kind of get a little more of this oil out. And then I'm going to go ahead and look it up in the manual to see exactly how much it takes. Uh, and we'll fill it back up.
And just to show you, this does have a nice oil dipstick, uh, so I can, you know, determine when it's full uh, and when it's not and when it's low. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and put that back in. And see, you really, like I said, you really want to take the wheel off. Uh, I have an older Toro snowblower that has two problems. One, it does not have this nice extension uh, tube here. Back in the 1980s when the other one that I have uh, was made, they didn't have those. So you basically had to tilt the whole uh, snowblower because you would get oil spilling everywhere. It was a total disaster. And then I had another Aaron snowblower that did have this tube, uh, but I did not know that you had to put uh, anti-seize on the shaft here. So when I went to change the oil uh, after two seasons, I couldn't get the wheel off and absolute disaster. So really, really, really messy oil change on that. This one, because the wheel came right off, much, much easier oil change. All right, I'm gonna stop the camera for a second so I can move this brush and kind of tilt the unit a little bit more, get a little more oil out. We're almost empty here, but I'd like to drain as much as I can because uh, presumably this might actually be the first oil change this unit has had. So I wanna get any metal shavings or filings out of it. Okay guys, so I tipped the, uh, the unit a little sideways and I got some more oil out. I just started to thread the plug in. It's really only like half of a turn in. But I want to show you, and I don't know if you can see it in here, uh, this does definitely have a metallic sheen. And that, again, that's to be expected. And that's kind of telling me that this probably is the first oil change. Uh, I, I don't think that the older couple that I bought this from did an oil change. So I am actually very happy that I did this. It did not take, uh, it doesn't take a lot of oil, but like I said, I'm glad that I, uh, I'm glad that I'm doing this because this machine is new to me, so I don't know its maintenance history. Um, I don't know if you can see here on the counter, but I did not even spill a single drop of oil, and that is that says a lot coming from me. If you watch one of my uh, Predator generator oil change videos, you will see it. that is quite the opposite uh, with that. Um, but I will tell you, I bought a an oil extraction pump, and I'm going to do another video on that. Uh, with the generator, the Predator 5000 inverter, which I really, really like. Um, and I think that oil change is going to be spectacularly easier and cleaner with the oil extraction pump. I'm still going to take the drain plug out, but that's going to be after I extract most of the oil. Um, so tightening this bolt, you don't really need to put the crescent wrench back on here, because if anything, you're just making this tighter. So that's less of an issue. And I don't want to over-tighten this. I think that's good. It was snug and I went just a drop more. So that's it. That is done. Let's get the wheel back on. Um, there are two different slots in here based on how far out you want the wheel. So I actually don't recall, to be honest, which slot it was in. So I think it was in the further one, the one closer to the machine. But we'll, uh, you know, we'll find out. I'll compare it to the other wheel. And actually, I think it was because I remember this, the shaft being relatively flush with, uh, with this. So I don't know if I line this up so, so good. So we're just gonna have to turn the wheel uh, and kind of find out where it is. And that's the one thing that's a little, a little bit of a pain. Let's, let's slide it back out and just get a better look here. So that's one and that's two. You know what? I'm going to actually put, while I'm, while I'm mentioning this on the camera, I'm actually going to put a little anti-seize on the pin because as I'm thinking about this, I don't want the pin to get stuck because that would be another problem. So by putting some anti-seize on the pin, that will allow me to take this on and off uh, in the future as well. And I'm threading the pin through both of the, the holes, so that way, should I decide to choose a different one at a later point, um, I can do that. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the other wheel off and I'm going to kind of do the same. Uh, there's really no reason for me to have to take the other wheel off, but should there be in the future, I don't want to have it stuck on the machine. So 
let me just change my gloves here because I have anti seize all over everything. And I want to try to keep this as clean and organized as I can. I'm just taking a look at the other wheel while I'm on this side and it is in the hole that I was thinking. So that's, that's good. And again, what better day to do this than a beautiful 90 degree August day. And I say that sarcastically, but also seriously, because when it is 10 degrees outside and it's a blizzard or there's an ice storm mixed in with the snow, I don't want to have to worry about doing maintenance to the snowblower. I want to know that the maintenance is done and it just works. All right, so I see, I think I see where this hole is, but let's see. Let's see how we can align this. Let me tell you, it is, it is not as easy as it seems to get this, get this pin back in here. Let's go a little more forward and see. I think that is correct. Ah, there we go. There we go. All right, the pin is, you know, let me put a little more anti seize while I've got it finally lined up. Because that is not easy to line that pin up, let me tell you. Like I said, on my 1980 Toro snowblower, it is 100% impossible to get this pin out. All right, perfect. All right, so that is... That is it from this side. Get a little anti seize off the wheel. Try to keep this as clean as I can. All right, so at this point, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stop the camera for a minute. I'm gonna go look up to see the right quantity and type of oil. I think this is 5W30. Uh, and then we're gonna refill it and then we'll wrap this video up. So we'll be right back, but I want you to do me a favor. Um, if you enjoy this video, if it helps you, if you could like and subscribe, it really helps me and it helps the channel. Uh, and we're going to do some follow-ups on this, uh, certainly as it's snowing, we're going to film this in action, uh, which will be a far cry from today, where it's blazing hot. All right, so we'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. I checked out the manual. It takes 0 .0, 0 0.70 liters, which is 700 milliliters, which in a quart bottle has 946 milliliters. So basically you're gonna to wanna to pour this in until you have 246 milliliters left approximately. So once the bottle gets down to somewhere around between two and 300, we're gonna stop. Uh, but I'll, I'll check a little bit along the way because I do not wanna overfill this. Uh, and it does say 5W30 uh, is the correct viscosity. So I'm just going to put some gloves on. I'm going to get a shop rag so I can clean the dipstick. Uh, and we're going to go slow because I don't want to overfill this. But we're going to get this to, like I said, to about 246 milliliters left in the, in the bottle. Let's take the dipstick out. Let's put a funnel in. And I'm just going to clean the dipstick off here. It is going to be a little difficult to determine the correct oil level because the dipstick uh, is so nice and shiny and the oil that's going to be new is going to be so nice and shiny. Uh, but we want to be somewhere obviously between low and high. Um, so all right, let's just put this aside. And I did get a decent amount of the oil drained out. I won't say all of it because I'm sure there's still some residual oil in there, but that's okay. And it really did help that I ran this to <clears throat> burn off the fuel because that got the oil nice and thin and uh, easier during the oil change. Now this oil is super clear. So like I said, it's gonna be a little, a little challenging to see this on the dipstick, but I'm do my best. I'm just gonna stop 
every once in a while and just kind of see where I'm at in terms of the level. I would rather underfill this just a little bit and check it than overfill it. If I overfill it, I don't have a lot of options here. I'd have to crack the drain plug um, or I can take my new oil siphoning tool to siphon some out. All right, so if we look here at the bottle, we want to be between two and 300. We're hovering just around 400. But I'm going to stop for a second just to take a measurement and see where we're at. Because I would rather underfill than overfill. And like I said, it's very, uh, it's very hard to see on the dipstick. It actually looks like we might be at the right level. So let me, let me wipe this off again. And the manual does not say if you need to have this screwed in or not. But I think we're a little on the low side, so let me put a little more in. Try to go rogue here and not use the funnel, uh, but I don't want to make a mess. All right, still got a ways to go on this. And I don't know about you guys, but for me, the worst part of the oil change is actually not draining the oil. The worst part of the oil change is refilling the oil because all of these small engines, they have such obscure amounts of oil that they take. It would be really nice if they just took one quart of oil, but that is not the case. And like I said, almost every single small engine that I have or that I've worked on, whether it's the snowblower, generators, lawnmowers, they all take these just absolutely obscure amounts of oil. All right, so I think I think we're good here. Let me just wipe this. Let me wipe this off, and I'll, I'll show you what we're looking at here. So hopefully you can see. Right now, this is this is clean. There's no oil on it. You can see the L and the H on the left-hand side of the dipstick. So let's go ahead and put this back in the fill tube. And I'm trying not to bump into the sides as much as I can. And like I said, the manual doesn't indicate if it should be tightened or not. All right, so let's come in front of the camera here. The problem is the oil is so, so clean that it's glistening that it's very, very difficult to see. So I think we're good. Let me take one more measurement. If anything, I could add a smidge more, but I really don't think we need to. I took that measurement without screwing it on. Just to be safe, I'm going to put a little bit more. We want to be between two and 300. We're still over 300. Now we're just under 300, so I think that's okay. And what I'm going to do, obviously, when I do run this uh, in the winter time, I am definitely going to to check this. I'm going to check it pretty often, especially after the first couple of uses. Uh, hopefully, the oil will get a little darker, and it will be a little bit easier uh, for me to see. Because right now, it's like I said, it's so new that it's very, very difficult. All right. According to the dipstick, this is this is full, so we're going to call it right there. And that is basically how you do some summer maintenance to your snowblower. So I hope you uh, found this helpful. And like I said, if you can like and subscribe, I'd really appreciate it. Thank you.